Okay, so we are going to start a, a new series, which is going to be car reaction videos. So super, super stoked. I haven't seen this quite one before. Um, it is by CNBC Make It, and the title is Living on 81K a Year in Decatur, Georgia, Millennial Money. So I love millennial money. I live currently in Georgia. Um, so yeah, let's see how they are living. I really started to get into finances when I hit my version of rock bottom. So that was when I had so much debt that I couldn't afford to live. I overdraft my account. I was going into further debt every single month and I knew I needed to make a change. Okay. Can we just give her like a huge freaking accomplishment? Like 28 years old and making 81K, which is so, so good. Most people who are in their 20s, you know, especially this day and age, are not making that much money. So, huge accomplishment to you, especially living in Atlanta. My name is Layla Cartfrouch. I'm 28 years old. I make about $81,000 a year, and I live in Decatur, Georgia. It was very normal for my family to have debt, so that is something that I carried into adulthood. That's not bad for student loans, especially it looks like she's paying them off pretty, pretty quickly. Right now I have like 60 something thousand dollars in student loans for undergrad. So 49 and she's paying them off at 28 is actually really, really low for somebody her age. So sucks. I was 18, that's when of course I took out my first student loans. And at the time I was just living with my dad and he was the one who was helping me out financially. He did have a little bit of money saved up in a CD account for me to go to college, but I would say it was just a few thousand. After about three years, I realized I no longer wanted to be a dentist, so I decided to stay in the biology field and just decided to go into environmental research. Wow, she has that low of a debt with a master's and undergraduate. The highest amount of debt that I had was in June 2018, and I reached $82,200. This was made up of my student loans, my car, credit cards, and then money that I owed my sister. It was only in her name, but I did contribute to the down payment, so that's where some of my student loans came in. Unfortunately, in 2015, I decided to co-sign a car with somebody I was in a relationship with at the time. That is one thing, I will never do it again. I will never have somebody on a bank account. Like, I mean, I'm married now, but when I was single, I always said that I would never in a million years do something like that again. Um, I had an ex who was on a Chase bank account with me and I wanted to get him canceled off of my bank account. And Chase was like, well, you gotta bring that person in. I'm like, well, I haven't seen this person within three years. Like, it's kind of crazy. Like, I'm married now. I'm just trying to get that person off my account so I can switch it from a college account to a regular account. And they're like, oh, well, that person has to be there. So you have to completely close that account and then redo a whole new account. So I'm like, okay, well, you ran my credit the first time, which makes no sense. And now you gotta wait for that person to do it. And I don't really know you know, we had a joint account for bills and stuff, but he was barely using the account. I don't know. It was really stupid. But lesson learned, 
never co-sign anything for anyone and two don't go on an account with a significant other or a family member unless you really really trust that person and you feel like you're going to be with that person for a very very long time or if you're married but also make sure that you have your own separate account from you know where you put all your your main check and money and stuff in and things were good for some time but Ultimately, this turned into the worst financial mistake I've ever made. I cried a lot. It was just very stressful overall. I did end up taking this person to court. I was garnishing their wages at one point, so I took a loss on that one, but I'm so grateful that that is no longer in my life anymore. So bad for it. I would say that I have a bit of an obsession with finances, so I'm constantly on my spreadsheets or okay, checking my bank accounts. To me, it's not stressful. That's just normal and what I prefer to do, but I could definitely see how other people can perceive that as a problem. I do believe it's important to invest while paying off debts. So the bulk goes to my debt, and then I do put about $300 per month toward my Roth IRA. And then the last area is my 401k. Okay, so let's see. Her rent, utilities, sixteen hundred, which is half the mortgage between her and her sister. A thousand dollars a month on discretionary discretionary spending. Student loans is a thousand dollars. That's pretty high. Um, I have the stupid subtitles one. Turn that off. Okay, there it goes. Okay, so her insurance, 707. That's pretty freaking high. Does that include renters, life, auto, and health? I don't know, so it's not too bad. Because I spend, like, me and my family, it's like five, by myself it's two. That is pretty high for insurance. Savings, $700 a month. Um, investment 610 so basically like savings food 400 four hundred dollars is a lot of money per month for one person business expenses 150 transportation 97 it's not 97 dollars no more with this day and age um, the price of gases is ridiculous medical expenses 50 I wonder what she's spending on medical expenses every month and then subscriptions um, 27 Netflix, Spotify, and Lingo Pie. So overall, her finances isn't too bad. Um, that discretionary spending is a hell of a lot of money. Um, that honestly, she can put half that towards her student loan debt or invest that other half. So I would definitely cut down on that discretionary spending. And that food budget is a lot for a one person single in Atlanta. Unless she's not cooking and she's going um, out to eat a lot, then that makes that makes total sense but overall not that bad with my new job i will be contributing six percent and then they match that six percent <clears throat> i would say i spend about four hundred dollars per month or so on groceries these days just because the prices have gone up but also because i purchase organic produce primarily now just for health purposes that makes sense on why she spends so much money I was diagnosed with Crohn's disease in early October, and things kind of just got worse from there. Overall, being diagnosed with this and just having the most physically and mentally painful year of my life really shifted how I look at life. So the small problems that I would face on a daily basis don't seem so big anymore. And to me, it's just about my health and I wanna prioritize being healthy. I probably was 21 and I started lifting in the gym and with that your body really transforms and I became really interested in just health fitness overall but also I liked the mental benefit from it. Hey everyone so I hope you guys like my new scenery. I love doing my eyebrows. Love. So this is the NYX nude matte shadow called Betrayal. I graduated with my master's in biology in December 2016, and I actually wanted to become self-employed or an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. I wanted to take my blogging full-time, my YouTube channels. 
I have quite a few side hustles. I do have two YouTube channels now, one focused on finances and then one for my just lifestyle. And then I also have two blogs based on the same topics. I wonder if that money in 2021, I made over $15,000 from everything. I do expect that to grow for 2022 and going forward. I did do a no spend year in 2020, which helped a lot with my journey, but overall I just got a lot tighter with my budget. So I made sure to keep track of every dollar that went in, every dollar that went out. I don't always stick 100% to my budget. I actually never do. Can we talk about how hard that is to keep track of every single thing that you do? I'm currently have been doing that since February on my tracking sheet. I will have a video posted soon. And that is extremely hard to make sure that you're sticking to your budget and the things that you want, especially, you know, because right now I am pregnant and I'm craving a bunch of foods. So it is super, super, you know, easy for me to go somewhere and be like, oh, I really want these tacos or, oh, I really want Burger King or something like that. And to sit there and stick to the budget, like, okay, listen here, bitch, you got like 15, you know, dollars or whatever that you should spend towards this because you've already like treated yourself like it's not a need it's a want because you have your overall focus is getting out of debt so yeah that is that's that's hard to do right? but it's very important for me to keep somewhat of a structure so I'm keeping my spending in check and I definitely know where I want to spend my money what I want to prioritize in my life to make me happy by the time I'm 30, I should be debt free in regards to my student loans and everything else. I would like to purchase some property, whether that's for myself to live in or to flip or to rent. I do want to be financially independent overall, probably by 40 to 45. The most important lesson that I learned about money is that you should always do your own research. You have to do what is best for you and based off of your own knowledge and decisions. Amen. I completely agree with this video. I love that she has some really, really good goals um, that she's doing. I love the budgeting tips and the ideas and stuff like that um, that she has going. It looks like she'd be traveling too. So I'm curious to see what it looks like with her traveling, the expenses and stuff like that. Um, to see if she's like a budget traveler or how all that works. So yeah, if you like this video, go ahead and put a thumbs up and subscribe. I plan on posting a reaction video of some sorts once a week more towards um, finance or just everyday life or sexual, whatever pretty much seems to float my boat for that week that I seem pretty interested in. I'm going to post a video about it because I want to watch it. So if you have any questions or any concerns or comments, put it in the description down below. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Also hit the bell so that we get notifications um, whenever I am posting new videos. I plan on being consistent for the rest of the year. I'm posting these videos once a week when it comes to the reaction and all this other stuff. So I got a lot of good stuff going on and I'm just going, going right into it for 2022. It's about getting that bag, making that money, and calling that a day. Love you. Bye.